eight part series of posts on um, how it is to go, how you should go about getting your USDA organic certification if that's something that you're interested in. So Organic 101, Five Steps to Organic Certification. This was posted uh, in December of 2020. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, solid nine months or so into COVID. Uh, the vaccines have just been uh, released, are not available to almost anyone yet, except for some uh, medical professionals. And down here we have under step three, receive inspection. Uh, for livestock, the, ins the inspection uh, may include inspection of feed production and purchase records, feed rations, animal living conditions, preventative health management practices, e.g. vaccinations, health records, and the number and conditions of animals present on the farm. Holy moly. Now, I thought vaccination is possibly required for organic certification. That doesn't seem to be what I knew uh, to be true of organic certification. So, um, and I know nothing about what these vaccinations are. So I went to another um, of their posts. Uh, this is uh, an earlier one in their series, but they've reposted it as of July 28th, 2022. This is Organic 101, Allowed and Prohibited Substances. Okay? And so first they say, organic standards are designed to allow natural substances in organic farming while prohibiting synthetic substances. That's it in a nutshell, what organic standards are supposed to do. Allow natural substances. We can argue all day long about what natural means and whether or not natural is inherently good. Obviously it's not. And they say things like, actually, you can't use arsenic in organic farming practices. Allow natural substances while prohibiting synthetic substances. Some synthetic substances are listed as exceptions to the basic rule and are allowed for use in organic agriculture. For instance, pheromones have long been used as an effective non-toxic way to confuse insects that may otherwise infest organic crops, especially fruit. Likewise, vaccines for animals are important disease prevention tools against many infectious diseases, especially since antibiotic therapy is prohibited in organic livestock. Now, I could not actually figure out because then it gets very confusing and muddled and you, uh, I, I, maybe by design, maybe not, maybe I'll just leave that leave that as an open question, whether or not these several points in the USDA site that I find the suggestion that your inspection for organic livestock certification may actually include you requiring to show the receipts that your animals are vaccinated, is that actually true? If it is true, which it seems to be, but I don't know this for sure, then the original framing of what organic means, according to the USDA itself, which is allowing natural substances while prohibiting synthetic substances, has been expanded to now be requiring some synthetic substances. Requiring substances that are created in a lab as something that is, that is mandated for organic certification now provides even more reason that uncertified organic, where you actually depart a little bit potentially from uh, what is required by USDA certification standards, is superior because the fact is that in general, and this is not going to be true if you're if you've got feedlots, if you if you're cramming the animals together, although those are normally not practices that are approved uh, for organic certification anyway that animals that are healthy, that are able to go outside, that are, that are gonna do the things that we want to be able to do as humans as well, because mostly the animals that we eat are also social. Be outside, eat the food that they were evolved to eat. All of this are not gonna require the high-tech interventions that we are, we are wanting to shove on them. All right, several questions. One, so I have not encountered this before. Yeah. I took what you read initially potentially to be about the vaccination of workers. Tell me that's not that I misunderstood what was said. I believe that is a misunderstanding because the okay. sentence begins for livestock. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So now let's follow that as a livestock requirement. Yes. A, this puts a whole different spin on the shenanigans that surrounded the redefinition of vaccines in order to uh, to make that term relevant to the novel vaccination platforms, especially the mRNA platform mm -hmm. that has been at the central of our covert effort. Yeah. The so here's here's the line of logic I'm seeing unfold here with. I must say, a good degree of horror. Mm -hmm. You redefine the term 
vaccine so that this new platform, which is a radical departure from what we historically mean by that term, doesn't create immunity. It creates, uh, it turns you into a vaccine factory. Do you remember what the redefinition was from and to by any chance? Uh, it's subtle, but I do I do believe I remember. Okay. I believe that the idea was a vaccine induces immunity, right? And that it had to be altered because these... That was inoc- the original. Yeah. Mm-hmm. These inoculations do not create immunity. What they do is they induce a process in you that creates immunity. In other words, mm-hmm. it's not the introduction of something that has they antigens. They turn you into a vaccine factory. You turn you into a vaccine factory. So that's mm-hmm. one issue. The or other issue... Um, not a vaccine factory, but a yeah, effectively, effectively a vaccine yeah. factory, yeah. Um, and in a very in a very haphazard way. The other question surrounded whether or not they prevent the transmission of the disease, right? right? So, in any case, the reason that this is so horrifying in the context of something like organic certification is what we learned painfully slowly in unpacking what these things actually did the over the course of mRNA vaccines, yeah. Mm-hmm was we learned that certain things that we were sort of gently nudged into assuming that turned out to be totally false um, had implications for health. So I'm Mm -hmm. thinking in particular of the substitution of the pseudouridines for the uracils in the mRNA transcripts, Mm -hmm. right? So what we were initially led to imagine was, look, we're going to inject you with this stuff. It's going to short-term cause some cells to produce some proteins that will alert your immune system, and then it will be gone because that's what happens to mRNAs. Yeah, that's what happens to mRNAs when you don't include this pseudouridine in every spot where there was a uracil. So what they did is they... Which makes those mRNAs thus altered resistant to the... Uh, the protein, mRNA aces. Yeah, the that mRNA would, aces that would otherwise be destroying any free-floating mRNA in the intercellular space. Right, for lots of reasons, some of which I think will come up later in our mm-hmm. in our discussion of IgG4. But the point is, okay, so now you've got a thing which is a vaccine by virtue of the fact that they changed the damn definition. And the idea is, well, vaccine is really, it's, it's synthetic, but it's leveraging an organic process that, you know, you know, okay, yeah, super elegant. Until you start telling me that you're introducing mRNAs that the body doesn't have a mechanism for taking apart because you substituted a pseudouridine for every damn uracil. And that means this thing has to find its way out of the body some new way or get degraded very slowly by uh, entropy over time, meaning that you have fragments of this thing. This is an insane plan. And the having idea... changed the definition of vaccine, having vaccines be in the literature on organic certification means that anything could be introduced under this word umbrella without us being any the wiser. Right. Worse, we are now beginning to see, so at the beginning of the vaccination campaign, you will of course remember that there was all of this talk about shedding which responsible voices like you and me largely dismissed, not because it was impossible Mm -hmm. that anybody would ever shed um, uh, either a spike protein produced by this or an mRNA um, that they had been injected with, but because the dosage would be so low compared to, you know, if a person survives vaccination, which almost everybody does, then the tiny dosage that you would get by shedding would be trivial almost no matter what it was, right? right? I mean, there's a trivial amount of cyanide in apple seeds. And if you swallow an apple seed, you don't die because it's small. Mm -hmm. But that said, there is now a uh, responsible and growing chorus of people who say not so fast. Actually, the shedding thing turns out to be real. I'm still unsure how it could be important given the dosage issue, but there are ways in which the dosage can be high. For example, lactation, for example, having sex with somebody who has uh, been vaccinated. and Yeah, although those, those two things wouldn't normally be lumped under the category heading of shedding. Well, I right? mean... You know, sexual transmission and they are infant transmission are, are different. They categories. are or they aren't. But the basic point is, look, there was no big fat warning to pregnant women. Don't, you know, yeah. nurse your babies after you've done this, even if internally yeah. that was understood Quite the opposite. Um, by the, the pharma companies who made it. But here's the point. OK, so now you're going to go to the market and you're going to buy organic beef, let's say. Mm. OK, and you're going to assume 
that organic means something like what it's always meant, which mm -hmm. is basically produced with natural processes, right? Would you be terribly upset if the cow that the beef had come from had been inoculated in some tried and true fashion against, uh, you know, some sort of pathogen that cows are afflicted with? Not really, because it would be more or less a trivial issue. However, as soon as you tell me that that cow might have been injected with a, you know, a pseudouridine right. uh, infused mRNA coated in lipid nanoparticles, and now I'm thinking, look, A, so I'm not saying that that's happening yet, right. but I'm saying it's coming. Right. Part of what's been driving this is that this platform is lucrative because you can basically make a vaccine by swapping a sequence into something you've already built for other purposes. Right. Um, but it's also true that what we have here is a, <clears throat> is a static set of definitions and, and apparently words, while the meaning of the words is sort of cryptically changing behind the scenes, where, you know, as, as the USDA site specifically notes, as I read from, uh, USDA certified organic meat uh, cannot have been given antibiotics, there may be some rare exceptions, but basically antibiotics are off the table if you want. You cannot be using antibiotics, especially with the sort of regularity that, you know, sort of prophylactically across the board, like a lot of major meat producers do, which is terrific. However... It is terrific that they are excluded. Yes, terrific yeah. that they're excluded. However, if I were given a choice between, um, you're, you know, you, you're going to buy a half a cow uh, or a whole cow. <laughs> you're going to buy a large chunk of a cow that has been produced um, well and it was grass it was grazing up until the very end um, but uh, it got sick at some point and there was an antibiotic treatment for the sickness that it got that that uh, that it was given and it was a short course and that was a couple years before it went to slaughter uh, or the thing that it got sick with, well, we've come up with this brand new thing that we're going to call a vaccine, and it's maybe got the pseudouridine in it, and it's got all these other, and it's got the lipid nanoparticles and stuff, and we're vaccinating that cow every single year or whatever the crazy schedule is decided by the manufacturer. Well, the cow number one, which had a single course of antibiotics for a sickness that came on and that was treated and then it cleared the system, is can't be certified organic. And cow two maybe can. And again, we're making up these vaccines for cows. We don't know that these vaccines exist for cows, yeah, but... right? Um, but I would vastly prefer to eat cow number one, the meat from cow number one, uh, which had a course or maybe even a couple of courses, right? Like antibiotics, um, as you know, as we have said over and over and over again, are one of the great, incredible human successes of Western medicine, as we have believed vaccines to be as well. But that doesn't mean that the you know widespread use in every possible uh, moment is the right way to use them. And so the USDA organic certification uh, position, which is absolutely no antibiotics, but because that, then yes, vaccines seems to really misunderstand complex systems, evolution, you know, what, you know, what it is that humans who are seeking organic certification, uh, both for themselves, if they're farmers or for their, for their food, if they're, you know, consumers, uh, would want. Like it just, it just is so unnuanced as to really miss the boat. Well, uh, I'm going to depart with you a little bit. I don't feel like this is unnuanced. I feel like we are having our assumptions. Well, no game. antibiotics ever is unnuanced. Right. But that, that's, that's, that is a, and, and it's easy to, but the, uh, it's easy to certify. You know, if someone yes. is coming in, you know, oh God, I've got, you know, my job is USDI organic sort of certifier and I've got to do 40 farms this week. I have no idea what the workload is, but I'm sure it's too high. Right. Well, it's much easier to have a list of like, wait, you, you know, you gave a course of antibiotics. That cow is not cannot be organic certified. Like, that's all I have to know. Right. right? It's so in that way, it is. Un-nuanced. Well, the rule may be unnuanced. Yes. What I'm saying is that the formulations here are smuggling in absolutely radical stuff as if it's minor and that that is yes. the gaming of our assumptions. Yes. And so you and I have an yes. instinct about an antibiotic. I do not want. Uh, meat from an animal that was given antibiotics to increase its rate of growth, mm -hmm. right? I don't want meat from an animal that was uh, given antibiotics in the last two months of its life. Mm -hmm. I'm not troubled by an animal that was given an antibiotic 
a year earlier. Why? Because I know something about what that animal is made of. I know it has a liver. I know it has kidneys. I know it will have gone through a process of degradation. I know that the antibiotics themselves are the products of biology. And so the basic point is that cow's ancestors were encountering these toxins in mm -hmm. the wild. The, the whole system is built to be anti-fragile by selection. And once you start introducing this radically new stuff, and the point is, what is it? Oh, it's an MRA, uh, mRNA covered in some some lipid. Okay, you've just not quite. Yeah, you just screwed me over twice, yeah. right? Because it's not really an mRNA, and that isn't lipid in the sense of some fat. Barf. Lipid never shows up that way in nature, right? And so, mm -hmm. you know, okay, you've gamed my assumptions and you've gotten me to be more relaxed than I should have been. But now, okay, so somebody's done something to some cow. Right, they've injected it with lipid nanoparticles covering some mRNA for some purpose. Again, this is fiction. This is fiction. Yes. But let's say they've done that, mm -hmm. and now I go to the store and I see, hey, I, there's two kinds of beef. I'm willing to pay the extra price. I want this organic one, mm -hmm. right? And when I, my assumption is the organic one is it going to be perfectly free from all toxins? No, the animal will have breathed. It will have been out in the world. They're you know, tractors on the farm, they have exhaust, whatever. Yeah. It's not perfectly free of everything, as none of us are. But it'll be 95% of the way there. Not if you injected it with this crazy crap. And now my behavior with respect to it should actually probably be the inverse of my instinct, right? If I want to eat a, a rare piece of beef, right, and I've gotten something that is certified organic, my sense is what's in that beef? Mostly beef. Right. right. What if what's in that I beef? I want cow stuff. In my right. I, I want it. To, and, you know, if it's not, you know, long ago we had a discussion about why I thought the pandemic might bring ground beef to an end. And I, at mm -hmm. some point we want to go back to this. That obviously didn't happen. Um, and it's worth going back through why I got it wrong or maybe just early. But And you're interested in the evolution of arboreal cows. Is that it? Oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. Nice one. Yes. Um, not so much. Honorary dad joke. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, but Does that make me trans? I hope not. Um, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. You identify as you want, just don't change anything. Okay. But um, but the point Seems is, look, enough. if you were gonna, if you gave me a steak and you said, you know, if I was starving and you said, here's a steak, that animal was vaccinated with mRNA coated in lipid nanoparticles, something yeah. that we now call a vaccine. My answer is. Yep, I'd like it well done, right? Why? Because you're going to at least potentially break apart some of the stuff that's dangerous to me with heat. Is mm. it going to make a steak I really want to eat? No, but if I'm starving, I'd much rather eat it after you've cooked the hell out of that thing, right? Mm. So it just inverts the assumptions, right? Right, and that's exactly the opposite inclination for you know at least at least many cuts of meat you know some some cuts of meat you know want to be cooked long and and slow and you know and all this but most of us who you know can afford to and are interested in forking out uh, more money for really high grade uh, beef steaks uh, don't want them well done you know right. medium rare is the is the usual thing at the moment and some people go towards medium but like between medium medium rare is where generally uh you know if you're looking at a rib buyer in new york or something that's that's what you're looking at and you're saying yeah in this case if you don't know what's in it you know maybe at least my assumptions the crap out of are, <laughs> are out the window yeah. uh, as soon as you do this whereas you know let's suppose that you know your your meat farmer as we did when we lived in olympia mm -hmm. um well Okay, I don't necessarily know what they did and didn't inject the animal with if they say, well, it's, you know, it's, it's uncertified organic, right? I'm doing what I should do. But I do know that if my farmer is also eating what he or she produces, mm -hmm. right, and they are on alert about all of the synthetic stuff that we've been told right. is safe that turns out not to be, they probably right. won't have injected the animal with this stuff for their own well-being. Mm -hmm. So it might be, an, again, a higher level of protection there. Mm -hmm.